investing in property makes sense. Investing in the right property takes knowledge. Welcome to the Rewarding Property Decisions podcast. I'm Jared McCabe, Director of Wakeland Property Advisory. Join me for expert insights into the fundamentals, trends and opportunities to help you create long-term wealth through smart property decisions. Hi everyone and welcome to episode 32 of the Rewarding Property Decisions podcast. So today I thought we would have a look at um, Melbourne's rental market and, and the dramatic turnaround that it's starting to show, uh, particularly over the last 18 months to two years. Um, obviously vacancy rates during the pandemic really were fairly significant. They were peaking at um, 5.2% across the board and, and certainly in a lot of parts um, of Melbourne, they were uh, far worse than that. So some of the specific types of properties, the high rise sector, that type of thing, um, which had a real, really significant impact on yields. Vacant properties obviously lead to reducing rents in order to try and secure a tenant. But obviously the increasing levels of supply that we experienced too, because a lot of short term accommodation that may have been leased out from an Airbnb or fully furnished, that type of thing, reverted to long term um, fixed term rents. Uh, and that exacerbated the situation because it meant that there was even further choice from a, uh, a renter's position. So after two years of very tough times for investors, things have really started to change this year. Um, and that turnaround has been highlighted by, highlighted by the um, tightening of vacancy rates. So back in March, um, they're now down, they were down to 1.8%. Uh, April, 1.7%. And May was at 1.6%. So really starting to tighten up. And that's obviously leading to um, weekly rental figures starting to increase, which is a, a really positive sign from a, uh, a rental provider's perspective. So I'm very fortunate enough to, today to be joined by Rebecca Berry from Bell Property. Rebecca is a, uh, a partner and head of property management at the St Kilda and Brighton Bell offices, and she has over 12 years of experience herself, but also leads a, uh, a very experienced and well-regarded um, property management team. Hi, Beck. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Jared. How are you going? Very, very well. So I'm sure for you and all of your team, it's been a, uh, a very interesting past couple of years, but how have things changed for you um, since the dark days of the pandemic starting back in 2020? Yeah, yeah, fairly dramatically, I have to say. We've seen some really, really positive changes and it's making our business and, and our team feel so much more happy with the way that things are going and also our clients are seeing some really good results now. So. We had, um, I think our rents reduced over the COVID period by about 7% yep. and now they're, they're pretty much there at what they were prior to COVID and they're starting to increase now a little bit, which is absolutely fantastic. And are you finding that's across the board or is there specific properties that are um, still delayed or performing better? I think the the one and two bedrooms have really, really picked up. Some of those rents had reduced by about 10% just to get people to actually apply for, and, and live in them. Um, those are back to normal now. We're seeing the increased in the increased prices in rent in more the houses now. So we're able to get, you know, maybe 50 to $70 more a week for houses than we were sort of up even up to a year ago. And what were some of the, the bigger challenges that you found during the, the pandemic, during the, um, the lockdown periods and things, both from a, um, a renter and a rental provider perspective? So rent, rent arrears was a really, really tricky one. So we had a lot of our renters in, in crisis and they weren't able to actually pay the rent. So we had to come up with a lot of um, rental reduction plans for them um, so that they were able to actually stay living in the home and so that would would be good for them and the owner as well. So we we created a lot of reductions so that tenants some some didn't have to pay their reductions back and some paid them back over a long period of time. So yeah. we were able to keep all of our renters living in their properties. A lot of our clients were excellent and they they really you know they they took a hit for their renters, but you know I think everyone just had to do what they had to do at the time. It was really just a case of um, buckling down exactly as you said and and doing what you yeah. need to do and in some circumstances it was um it was tenants that were in a fortunate position and in others it was the um, the rental provider that was in the fortunate position. but we all took a bit of a hit in some form or another. Yeah, absolutely. So it's interesting down your way because, I mean, you guys are now um, covering St Kilda and Brighton, um, but St Kilda more specifically, I guess it's it can be and is quite a transient property market. So how did that impact on the um, on rental values and, and things? I would have thought it could have been further exacerbated than other parts of Melbourne during COVID. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think it was our area and probably central Melbourne that got hit the hardest. Yep. So um, in, in our peak, we had a vacancy rate of 8.46%, um, which is the highest we've ever seen. Usually our sits around 25 Sometimes it even gets lower than that. So the rents as well reduced by around 7 to 8%. Yep. And it was just hard. Mm. The vacancy, the, actually the days on market throughout the COVID peak hit around 72 days on market. We were trying to lease properties um, via video link, um, FaceTime or even pre-made videos, which and we were able to actually rent the properties like that. I think we did about maybe 70 um, 70 secured tenancies throughout that that one year period where we weren't able to even go out and show properties. So, um, yeah, very, very different. And I think um, we're back on track now, so it's feeling feeling much better. Yeah, it's good. a lot more peace of mind, isn't it? Have you seen anything that could even remotely compare to this uh, during other times of your career? I, I've never seen anything like this before, ever. When I started my career in real estate here in Melbourne, it was just such a buoyant market. It was 2009. There would be lines of people um, outside rental properties, 20, 30, pro- 20, 30 people waiting to have a look through one or two bedroom apartments. Um, and when I moved here myself, I thought, oh my God, I'm never going to find somewhere yeah. to live. And, um, it's so different now. And, and, and while things are still back on track, we don't have that volume of renters looking for properties. It's not huge high volumes from what it was, but it's certainly better. You, I mean, you guys would be an interesting case study, I think, for a lot because, as we said, it is quite transient. You do get a lot of um, backpackers and things around that type of market, short-term accommodation. Is And I, I know from um, speaking to a few people, even up in, in Queensland, that sort of an area where they're still struggling to get um, workers and things, particularly for uh, um, holiday type accommodation and, and that, to ho- holiday destinations where they can, they're can they struggling to get people to work in, in retail and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, are you still not seeing the usual number of, um, of backpackers down your way? No, it's, it's still a lot quieter than mm. what it used to be. Um, and, and as you said, they're a large portion of our renters, um, cafe workers, just um, people who are fairly transient coming in, signing six-month leases. We do a lot of um, fully furnished properties and, and they're the ones that were sitting on the market for a lot longer than those vacant, than those unfurnished properties and with the longer-term tenancies. Yeah. So, okay, look, focusing more on the positive now that things are on in the improve, what do you think has been driving the, uh, the turnaround in conditions? I think definitely population growth. Um, absolutely. That's probably first and foremost. We're just seeing more people in the country now. So we're able to actually get a lot more people through our properties and, and secure great renters for our clients. Um, I think now that we've seen sales taper off a little bit, a lot of our a lot of our properties sold throughout the COVID period. Um, I think more people are looking for long-term uh, rentals because they may not be able to afford to actually purchase a property. Yep. And are you, have you seen much of a um, an increase? We're certainly starting to notice that in, um, and it's not to say they're coming back in droves, but there has been an, an increase in, in inquiry from an investment perspective. There just seems to be a few more investors around. And I know there's been a lot of negativity around um, the rental market, not so much around prices, but more around the lack yeah. of, um, yeah. of, of uh, <laughs> rental properties. So are you starting to see any change there or anything of note? Yeah, we absolutely are. Yeah, I wouldn't say huge volumes, yeah. but definitely a lot more than previous. And we'd be expecting this to continue, the, the, the building of, of rental values, rental figures. It'll, it should only increase over, um, over the coming 12 months and more. That's what we're thinking. I mean, already off the back of the last half of COVID, we've, we've put through probably 150 rent increases over the last six months. So things are starting to improve. Those rents are going up slowly. These aren't dramatic increases. We're probably talking about 15 to 25 dollar increments per week but it's it's something so they are starting to go up very gradually too much more than that i guess can put unnecessary pressure on on renters as well can't it i mean then they that you've got to be able to factor it into a budget and if all of a sudden your your rent goes from um three hundred and fifty dollars a week up to four hundred and fifty dollars a week it's a yeah uh, it's a substantial change and that's probably when they will start to look at alternate accommodation 
Yeah, and we don't want that. Our, our, mm. You know, our rental providers have gone through such a hard time with having long vacancy periods throughout the last two years. You know, you know our advice to them is if you have a good tenant, keep them in the property. If they're paying their rent on time, they're looking after the place, you know, a rent increase may not be the only option. You could even do a lower one and, and span it out over a two or three year period. It's just, mm-hmm. yeah, one huge increase isn't what we're suggesting at this point. Yeah. And what are you finding um, from an, an expectation perspective from a, a renter's point of view? Has that changed at all over the um, over the COVID period? Are they expecting more? And obviously the other thing to note is the, um, the changes that occurred to the Residential Tenancies Act last year with, with um, increased... Well, expectation is the wrong word, but increased requirements for a rental provider and, and what's expected of the accommodation. Has that changed yeah. things in people's expectation? Yeah, so for, I'll address your first point first. So with regards to the rental prices, so we're having less negotiated terms with renters now. Yep. So over the COVID period, they would be ne- negotiating the rents down quite considerably. Um, we've found that that sort of plateaued out now. We're not really having that. People are just applying at the actual rental price and we're able to secure um, renters for our rental providers at that set price. So there's less negotiation there, um, which is which is a good sign. Yeah. Um, the second point in regards to, what were you saying again, the second part? Just around the Residential Tenancies Act and the changes last year yeah. and have um, renters' expectations changed in terms of what they expect of the property, so dated absolutely. properties, that sort of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and rightly so yeah. in, in some cases because a lot of the properties did need a little bit of TLC. Some of them were reasonably dilapidated and had to be brought up to standard. So, I, you know, for, for me, um, in this job for the last 14 years, um, I think that, that the new legislation changes were excellent. Um, it's it's forced a lot of our rental providers to bring their properties up to standard, which has only attracted even better renters for their properties. So it's a win-win for both pe- for both parties. Um, and yeah, I think I think renters are much more educated. They know what minimum standards are. They know what the property should have. Um, I think both both parties are much more educated and as a result, the properties are to the standard that they should be now and are basically reflect, reflective of the price that you're able to, to get for your property. Ah, very good. Okay, Beck, we like to um, provide the um, podcast listeners with a bit of a, a case study and an example. Have you had any um, scenarios in recent times, um, whether they be COVID related or with the market starting to improve, where you and the team have, um, have really provided one of your rental providers or, or a renter with some, um, some really good and successful advice? Yeah, so so we had one of our new rental providers call us about two months ago. He called in almost tears because his property had been on the market for four months with a with a local wow. agent. They hadn't been able to get anyone to rent it. They had about maybe six people through the door the entire time within that four four months. Without giving um, too much away, um, we don't need addresses and things. But what type of property was this one? It was a two bedroom apartment. Yep. Yep, um, one bathroom, one car space in Elwood in, in a beautiful, beautiful street. So what our first piece of advice was to him was his advertising. The agent had it advertised with um, iPhone photos. Yep. Um, no, I'm not against the Common iPhone. Common mistake, but, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, in, in this market that's so competitive when, you know, you look at one or two bedroom apartments and there'll be in excess of 500 in, you know, the St Kilda Elwood area. The advertising has to be elite. So yep. we suggested professional photos with a digital floor plan um, and then digital furniture in two of the rooms. So we usually get it in the bed, one bedroom and one living area. And that just makes the property look so much more like a home. It's come a long a way, that, that digital furniture in recent times oh, too, hasn't it? It looks, it looks so really good. good. I mean, And for yeah. those that aren't sure, um, yeah. it would probably be pretty hard to tell the difference. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it, it does look completely real. So what we did, we went away, we took new photos, we got the digital furniture, we remarketed his property and we remarketed it for $15 more than what the other agent had on there. It's obviously gone right back to the top of the portals because having been on there for four months with the other agent, it was right down the bottom and not getting enough exposure. Yep. So we've put it on there. It's rented within 10 days of being on the market. Fantastic. So, yeah, it's that's just it, it's a great case um, case study for 
owners who are hesitant to pay for that marketing. It is very inexpensive. And the way that we like to sell it is that if you pay for this now, you will reap the rewards. You, your vacancy period will be lower. You'll get more people through the door and you can use those photos over and over and over until you make massive changes to the property. So and if that had been done, as you said, four months ago, then um, you look at the, the savings that would have been made with, with consistent income coming through. So yeah, it is a really Absolutely. good case study. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Beck. I really appreciate you giving us some time to have a chat. I'm sure everyone's found it very valuable. Um, so, uh, yeah, we really appreciate it. Cool. Thanks so much, Sarah. Thanks for having me on. So thank you very much for joining Beck and I for uh, episode 32 of the Rewarding Property Decisions podcast. As always, please feel free to uh, share the podcast far and wide with family, friends and colleagues so that we can continue to um, get it further and wider. Uh, if you would like further information on how to make rewarding property decisions, please visit our website, wakeland.com.au. And if you'd like further assistance from uh, Rebecca Berry, their website is Bell Property. that's B-E-L-L-E property.com forward slash saint dash Kilda. Thanks again and I uh, look forward to speaking with you all soon.